Hi, this is Gary Auden. We have an educast today about conferencing, clear and easy conferencing, sponsored by Yealink and Telecom Reseller. There are two of us going to be talking today, Matt Hastaki, who is a product marketing consultant at Yealink, and I'm Gary Auden. And as we always do, we talk about what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about a lot of different challenges here. One of the problems with conferencing technologies when people buy it, they sort of underestimate what it has to do, what it has to accomplish. But we're also going to talk about the problem of people in the room, people arriving, people moving around. We need to make conferencing technology as plug and play as possible. Otherwise, people won't use it. And we have several design considerations to go through as well. So Matt, let's start with the first slide. Why is conferencing getting to be so important today? Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. So about 75% of employers rate teamwork and collaboration as very important in a survey. 97% of employees and executives believe that lack of alignment within a team impacts the outcome of a task or project. So what does that mean? Communication and collaboration. They need, they're pretty important, right? So a couple points, uh, both points I wanted to talk about on this slide is collaboration and unified communications take off. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. They unify your communication. They enable collaboration, making employees better and more productive. Another point I wanted to touch upon is remote work climbed 115% since 2005. What that means is the way we collaborate and how we are collaborating is evolving. The next point I wanted to make is the time to collaborate. Why is it important? Well. You don't want to walk into a room and then fumble five or 10 minutes just to get your meeting started. That takes away time from what you're trying to do, which is meet about a certain topic, right? You're trying to be productive and get things done. Well, if it takes you five to 15 minutes just to start a conference, that's very unproductive. And nobody in their busy schedules today has time for that. Now, one of the points you made is you said the word room, and I think covering the room is an issue because there's always going to be different size rooms, and different rooms may be not conference rooms, but you end up making them temporarily. Right, Gary. So in another survey, we had 39% of employees believe that their people in their own organization don't collaborate enough. Why do you think that is? I'm guessing it's because of where they collaborate, how they are collaborating, and what they're using to collaborate. Meeting sizes vary and can change on the fly. One meeting might have two to three people. That goes back to that huddle space bullet point a couple uh, slides ago. The next meeting might be 12 or 14 people deep. A meeting that starts with four people, maybe that ends with seven if you need to pull other people into that meeting. Have you ever been to a conference room and it sounds like a speaker's in a fishbowl or far away? Did you feel like the meeting was productive? No. Conference rooms are built for aesthetics sometimes and not acoustics. And conference rooms are typically designed for a static number of people. So the technology that supports them really needs to be flexible. And right now, we're not seeing that too much in the market. One of the words that I keep bringing up when I talk about conferencing is the word clarity. And if you're not clear at both ends of the conference, then it's not even worth having. Isn't that correct? Correct. Why talk if nobody's going to hear you? Wayne House Research conducted an online survey of about 144 audio and web conferencing users. And of particular note, Respondents indicated that call fidelity issues like background noise, the inability to understand if more than one person speaks, unnatural interactions, and lack of clarity are cited as the most major concerns. Simply put, conferencing without clarity is unproductive. I read a study recently that actually had participants state that they dozed off during conferences. Dozed off, Gary. Who falls asleep in a meeting? Well, apparently people do. Workers need products that support them, not hinder them. Without clarity and ease of use, UC products won't be used and widely adopted, and all the benefits of that really expensive unified communication system will never be realized. That brings up another point, and that's noise. And one of the things that I try and get people to understand is there's lots of noise that's in your office that's background that you ignore, but a conferencing system has to deal with that and try not to transmit it to the other end. So what kinds of noise are we dealing with? There's a, a bunch of different uh, noise and distractions out there, Gary. Very few rooms are actually noise-proof. Most conferences, conferences happen in a noisy environment. 
Sure, there may be noise reduction technologies out there, but there's still plenty of distractions and background noise. So for instance, you might have construction crews or car horns going, Soho workers, you might be able to hear their baby crying, a dog barking, their neighbors cutting the grass. Um, another one that's overlooked is the HVAC system. People often forget because they get accustomed to it. So another point I wanted to make is about sound reflections. Oftentimes, the design of the room and the materials the room are made out of can hamper or hurt your acoustic environment or the voice quality of your conference call. Uh, I actually had a customer once tell me that they built a conference room in a uh, fallout shelter. Well, that's complete cement, concrete bunker, and horrible for noise. You get a whole lot of uh, reverberations and reflections off of that. The, uh, the acoustic, it must have been an acoustic nightmare, Gary. So these are some of the considerations we need to think about uh, when conferencing. I think there's another one that people forget about. People move in conferences. They, if it, especially if it's long, you don't sit there because you can't sit still for that long. Other people are enter, entering, people are moving around. How do we deal with that? Right, Gary. So if you're like me, you like to get up and move around when you're talking. Uh, I sit enough during the day, and if I can walk around and talk about something while I'm on a call, it helps me think it's uh, just the way I like to kind of do my business. The problem with this is it can sound like someone is going in and out of a tunnel when they talk if you're using a conferencing device. One moment they're loud and clear, next moment they're quiet as a mouse. This creates a challenging problem to solve through technology. A product needs to be able to adapt to the person speaking and pick up their voice in every and any angle of the room. People often come in and leave meetings during meetings and this can pose challenges. So that gets into the next slide that people are always entering and leaving. You really don't even know how many people are going to be participants until it actually happens. Yeah, so this kind of goes back to how conferencing and conferences and collaborations changing, right? Have you ever booked one conference room based on the size of the meeting but ended up needing another because more people showed up than originally planned? Things happen and requirements change. Don't let a meeting space or technology dictate how and where you conference. A good product should give the user the flexibility to increase the meeting size or space on an ad hoc basis. If you need your boss, Stacy, or the tech guy, Adam, for a quick minute to advise on a call, don't be afraid to get them in the room and talk. That's the point of the conference call, right? You're trying to solve an issue and be efficient about it. One of the points I think is important, you made it early on, is the plug and play capability, if it's not there, you get discouraged from making, setting up conferences. Right, Gary. So what are some of the biggest challenges facing uh, technology adoption today? Ease of use and compatibility, right? Your company's IT staff needs products that are easy to set up and configure. Every person's level of technical savvy differs, but one universal principle holds true. Products that are easy to use will be used, and by everyone. Even tech geeks don't always want to read an 800-page manual on how to operate something like a conference phone. When do most people show up to meetings? also is another point I wanted to point out here. Uh, right when it starts. With that being said, the time it takes to kick off a meeting is crucial. No one wants to have to figure out how to call in somewhere, how to add people to a call, or how a product works. And finally, products that actually help facilitate meetings are shown to be the most successful because they are widely adopted and used all the time. In my line of work, the best compliment I have ever heard a product get is when a customer tells me, we can't live without that product. Technology that gives users a common experience are shown to be more likely to be used and adopted. One of the points I think is very important though is you can't just have one conference device. You've got other inputs and outputs that you have to deal with, so you need the flexibility to make the conference attractive to everyone. Right, right. That goes back to how conferencing and technology has evolved. The technology has to evolve with the way we communicate communicate and collaborate. How many times are you on a call with one device but actually need to switch to another? You walk in from, you know, early to work or from lunch and you're on a call with a customer and you need to pull somebody in and do a quick conference call. Um, you're sitting at your desk, you get a call, you need to go somewhere quieter for an impromptu meeting, something like that. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could just walk into a meeting room and have that conversation on whatever device that you're using? Cell phone, soft phone, just walk in and connect, you know, at the flick of a switch. 
one of the challenges I see is that all of us have all of this kind of technology and we don't want to read another manual to deal with another user interface. It has to be intuitive. Otherwise, it may not be used, correct? Right, Gary. So how do we make technology intuitive? We make technology as similar to the other technology we use every day, i.e. smartphones. According to Pew Research, 95% of Americans use cell phones and 77% own smartphones. That's up 35% from 2011. What this means is that almost everyone is familiar with a smartphone interface of some kind. The app icons, how to swipe to get to other menus, and tapping on an app or an icon to drill down into that menu for more features. Now, Yay Link is the sponsor of this Educast, but a lot of us don't know who Yay Link is. Would you describe them, please? Certainly. So Yay Link is a global leading UC terminal solution provider. They got the uh, start in 2001 with USB link phones. In 2009, they sold their first SIP phone, and in under four years, they became the number two SIP phone manufacturer in the world, where they sit today. Uh, they're actually poised to take uh, the number one spot uh, with a strong finish to the second half of this year. But the most distinguishing fact about Yaylink that I have found is their R&D department. Yaylink has around 600 employees now and half are R&D. So what does this mean for the consumer and the customer? This means that their customers get quick turnaround times on products and features, updates to firmware, new firmware features, and they can even create distinct features and firmware for larger opportunities. I think that's a pretty uh, amazing fact about a company, that they can do things in a, in a you know, matter of weeks or months. Well, that gets into the product we're really gonna discuss here, the CP960 conference phone that satisfies a lot of the challenges we talked about. It certainly does. So what Yaylink, uh, kind of going back to that point about how Yaylink can uh, create new features and products really, really quickly. Uh, the CP960 is Yaylink's sec second generation conference phone. Um, it does solve a lot of the issues that we already spoke about, Gary. It features a five inch color touchscreen. It runs on Android 5.1, has a very similar user interface to your smartphone. Uh, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, so it gives you flexible connectivity options wireless mic pods that give you up to 65 feet of coverage, and Yaylink has partnered with Harman Kardon to deliver an HD audio experience unlike any other conference phone on the market. Yaylink also has noise-proof technology that allows the phone to adapt to the mobility of the speaker, creating flexible and consistent meeting spaces. I noticed you made some of those points on the next screen. Is there anything else here that you'd like to uh, focus on? Yeah, a couple of other bullet points. We talked about the, the flexibility and the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth connectivity so you can walk in a room with your cell phone and be able to connect quickly. Uh, the other point I would like to make on this is a three and a half uh, millimeter jack for voice output. Uh, what that means is basically you can put into a larger conference room and run those exter external speakers if you so choose. And then the last feature I'd like to kind of point out is the easy to deploy and plug and play uh, that Yaylink always brings to the table. Yaylink offers easy to deploy and plug and play options for all their products. And this is uh, no different than the rest of their product line. The word versatility pops up on the next screen, but versatility can be interpreted many different ways. What are we talking about here with the Yaylink product? So this is a, uh, shows the backside of the phone to see the capabilities that the phone has, or at least some of them. The phone is carefully designed with Yaylink's full considerations of customers' current and future needs. Yaylink gives the user two USB ports for call recording or connecting with a PC. So in addition to the localized recording that you get on the phone, you're able to plug an external USB drive into that phone and record to that. The local recording feature gives users up to 100 hours of record time, which can then be pushed to a USB device if the user chooses to store or listen to a conference at another location. You can also see that there's a security slot for the phone and two wired mic ports if you prefer the wired mic pods over the wireless. Technology at your fingertips, I thought, was an interesting picture that you came up with. Can you go through a couple of these? Certainly. So I wanted to highlight some of the features uh, that Yaylink is offering on the CP960. The wireless mic pods. Uh, I think is a wonderful feature. You know, nobody likes wires. Everybody's, you know, in, in my industry, in my daily work, 
I get asked constantly about wireless, so I think that's a huge selling point to this phone. Um, pairing via USB, uh, you know, soft phones are gaining popularity, so the ability to be able to pair this device with a uh, with your laptop and use your soft phone would be great. Um, call recording, I, I mentioned on the last slide, the 100 uh, total hours of localized call record time, I think is a wonderful feature. And we're going to talk a little bit more in a couple slides here about the Yaylink Ye Link Pentagon meeting room. Well, let's move on to the word clarity because you spent a lot of time on that in sound quality. Yeah, so we talked briefly about the Yaylink and Harman Kardon partnership. If you're not familiar with Harman Kardon, they're an industry leader in audio technology products. Well, Harman Kardon has allowed Yaylink to use their superior audio technology to bring to market the CP960 that delivers a crystal clear audio experience. That Pentagon meeting room, just I found a fascinating title. What does that mean? So Yaling's Pentagon meeting room is a virtual meeting room that allows up to five-way conferencing, single-touch invitations, single-touch escalations of meetings, and active speaker technology. As you can see, Elliot's name is highlighted on the corner screenshot below, and this allows participants to recognize who is speaking. How many times you've been in a conference and you're like, who just said that? Do, you don't know who's actually talking or who's in the meeting. Well, now this technology allows you to pinpoint, yep, I know that this person from this organization is talking right now. In a sense, this you should add the word presence here because it not only says who's present on the call, but who's present talking. Correct. Now, let's move a little further. There's a number of features that you have on the next slide dealing with the phone. Which of those would you like people to remember? Yeah, so this this new conference phone from Yealink offers a, a whole bunch of different features. Uh, to kind of recap and highlight the ones that I thought were uh, kind of the biggest selling points around this phone and, and really help solve conferencing and audio quality issues, the Harman Kardon audio technology that delivers crystal clear HD voice, the 20 foot uh, and 60 up to 65 foot pickup range with the wireless mic pods that uh, gives you total coverage of most conference rooms. The Android 5.1 uh, operating system and common user interface. So this phone's gonna be really easy to use and pick up for most individuals if you've ever used an Android uh, smartphone. The five-way conferencing I think's a, a pretty big deal, allows you localized five-way conferencing. Uh, spoke about the different connectivity, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, um, the connection to the PC via the USB, and the 360-degree voice pickup range is also a very uh, attractive feature. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for your time spending with us. This are, these are some websites you might go to to inquire about the product or send an email for sales. Our contact information here for Daniel Shi is available. And thank you very much, Matt, for today's uh, presentation. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it.